over the trades on the day for Wednesday, August the 9th, 2023. Down on the day, minus 2,900 and live trading minus 2,482.50, a significant level of slippage. And this is a drawdown day. Our last equity peak was yesterday, August the 8th. And when you look at portfolios, what you do realize is that if you're not at an equity peak, you're in a drawdown. And so there's more days where you're not at an equity peak than you are, which means you're in a drawdown. So that means if you're up, say, 20000 and then all of a sudden you're down 1000 you're in a drawdown. Even though you're only down 1000 off your equity peak, you are uh, in a drawdown. And so um, up on the week, up on the month, quarter, and year, tomorrow is CPI. And one of the things I looked at are the CPI results. I want to go over those. And I pulled the data from the portfolio calculator, hypothetical results going back, you know, had time to do about 14 really quick. And pre the day before CPI on the last 14 trades is 7 to 14. So uh, the day before CPI is good. And in 2023, um, 3 out of 7 CPI uh, were profitable and it's net profitable. Average CPI day was 1,073 in 2023. And... Like I said, the last 14, going back to June 22, the day before CPI, 7 to 14, $1,400, 8 average. Today was a down day, obviously. The last 14 trades on CPI are minus 755. And the last, only one winning trade in uh, 2023 20, on CPI day. And the average day is minus 4767. So uh, July... CPI was minus 25.90. June was minus 44.32. May was 90, minus 97.55. April minus 197.50. March minus 38.90. February was only up up uh, CPI day so far in 2023. And then in January is minus 15.587. So after today's loss, we're about 1% off of our equity peaks. And so I am looking at not trading tomorrow. Uh, I don't. You know, we'd like to pause. We'd like to find a way to pause at Equity Peaks, especially after the run we've been on. So it's been about 10 out of the last 12 days have been winning days. So a big winning streak um, as far as percentage of winners. And we've had one, I guess, one five figure day in that time period. No, no big 20K days. We've, our biggest day in that time period was about 11K. We don't want to miss a big day. But given the CPI record, um, sometimes these things mean revert. So if you have, you know, a long period of time where CPI days are negative and then um, you could get a CPI day that's positive. But, you know, we're at a point where we, we could wait for a further day, further drawdown. Would have been nice to time it and not trade today. Um, I, had that, I had that perception coming into Monday's trade, but we're up on the week. And so um, pausing here, waiting for a further drawdown if there's a big uh, intraday drawdown of about 10k then maybe we'll phase in intraday but right now it looks best to just pause for tomorrow's trade and not trade on cpi given the uh, pretty bad record of cpi three out of the, only three out of the last 14 cpi days are positive and i think the market is anticipating a um, negative cpi and it could be a big gap up of 200 or gap down of 200 and a lot of volatility and a consider, considerable chop. It could be a big day. We could miss a big day. We're trying to manage risk here. And um, we, we would like to keep our account volatility as low as possible. So tomorrow, I'm not trading CPI. It's, it's a trade you can take tomorrow if you want. I could, we could miss a winner. But we'll still wait for a further drawdown at this point. Um, on CPI and so I would have liked to have been at equity peaks today um, but like I said I considered uh, stepping stepping aside on Monday and we are up on the week and so let's look at the market and the trades on the day to show you how unusual this market is I'm going to show you this first three days in a row this is a discussion on the market dynamics and on Monday market sold off around 11:30. it rallied it's kind of a um, prop up rally yesterday around I guess around 11:30 or so rally today same thing market sold off a little bit 
little bit more of a V pattern. The V patterns get sharper. This is kind of a wide V, medium range V, and this is a very narrow V. And then it rallied, but then it rolled over. So it just, I mean, every day the market is rallying in this time period here, talking about how difficult it is to short this market. And I want to show you this because how unusual it is to, um, to trade like this and based on history. So here are the results in 2023 alone. If you just look at this in 2023, $51,000, $5,300 drawdown, 567 average trade profit. I'm going to show you the easy language code for this. And this is just in 2023. So if I'm just looking at this, if the date is greater than 1-1-2023, we're just looking at 2023 and time is between 11.15 and 12.15 and close is less than the open of the day. Buy next bar market, stop loss 100 points on the NASDAQ, which is $2,000 and set exit on close, which gives out the close of the last bar. You want to change that to if time is equal to 16.14 if you want to automate it. Um, it won't automate, but it, it this back test, just a rough back test. I use set exit and close for quick rough back test. Look at the results once again. Now we're going to look at it historically and take this out. And it just shows you the unreasonable, uh, long only nature of this market. So here are the results of this strategy. There are time periods when it works for very short periods of time, very well for very short periods of time. Uh, you can see that here and here, and then these kind of these are kind of increasing, and this one really surges right here, right at the beginning of January of 2023. All of a sudden, let's just buy it every day when it's down between 11 and 12. We're just going to buy it, and it just goes straight up without any hardly any adverse excursion. And so, what do you do with that trading? With that in your trading, because if you take uh, short trades, it affects those. If you take long trades, it affects those. You adjust your whole, you adjust your whole trading strategy based on an anomaly that's lasted eight months. But historically, it's it works, but it's not um, all the it's not an all the time thing. In these these instances, two or three months, you can see it working. Um, but here it's working for eight months, and it's up fifty thousand dollars. And so, just the nature of how difficult this market is to short is the strongest intraday Nasdaq bull market. That I've seen, and it's just it's unbelievable um, that, that these dynamics are um, these dynamics continue to the to the extent that they continue amidst the fundamentals, which are you know Fed tightening. So that is what we're looking at. I think that is significant. I'll make a separate video for that as well. Um, here is the Nasdaq, the day session, and you can see um, the nature of it. Um, it was f finally you know Monday and Tuesday it rallied. Um, and then Wednesday it started to rally. Then it makes sense that it rolls over because I mean, it's hard to imagine that it would do that every day. It's still, the strategy was up for the day because it closed higher than that turning point. And S&P, same thing. And so just a lot of turning points, wide-ranging turning points during the day, fighting shorts, fighting shorts um, all the way down, kicking and screaming. And let's look at the 24-hour session as well. Then we'll look at the trades. You can just see the nature of the way this looks. Um, it's just uh, fighting back. It's fighting back on the 60-minute charts. Let's look at the Nasdaq on 60-minute charts, and the same same thing. It uh, you know yesterday it broke down here, it came back, then it broke down, it tried to come back, then it rolled over, and it's like you know something that's about to go over the edge is you know, fighting back, fighting back. Um, but we've seen it we've seen it do this many times. This year, and it, it does always seem to come back so far this year, but at some point, you know, we'll get some rollovers and some more short trades. Um, so let's look at the trades on the day. We'll go to the micros first and then the e minis. So the NASDAQ, they, the, all these strategies matched. The NASDAQ straight, trades were up on the day, plus 91.50 on AT2022. This one um, has two out of the last three trades, I think, are profitable. It's been um, one of our dogs of the of our strategies. We keep it in the portfolio because dogs become the top strategies, and the top strategies can become the dogs. And so we get that diversity of different methodologies. Minus 1050 on EVP1, trying to get short at the end of the day. Market says no, no, we're not going to follow through to the downsides. Gap continuation. All these short trades start to look the same. You try to short it, and it just kind of floats back. And you know, you you deal with this because. It'll do. It'll participate in this type of price action, 
and then you'll get the the leg down that makes up for it lately we're not getting that leg down it's always floating back and there's something always propping it up so minus 7250 on gap continuation today on the micro max 7 plus 9750 um Momentum reversal didn't get long today. That rollover would have made it not that profitable anyway. But the NASDAQ was up today. It was up about 1,000 on the E-minis. Um, and let's look at the S&P. The S&P strategies were down. Opening chop, uh, loss, minus 66.25. Opening chop, 2, minus 122.50. And then minus 165 on tick count trend dynamic. Turnaround, both the short and the longs lost. And so, tough day on the S&P. 0 for 3 on the S&P. I'm showing the signals match between the S&P, uh, the E-minis and the micros. Uh, AT2022 plus 905, EVP1 minus 100. Gap continuation minus 725. MAG7 plus 975 uh, on the NASDAQ E-minis. S&P E-minis minus 662.50 opening chop. Uh, minus... 12.25 on opening chop 2 and tick count trend dynamic turnaround both lost minus 16.50 and so let's look at the money management indicator so you can see the path on the day we were up down here and we were due for follow through we keep being due for follow through but it rallies back and so we were up for a good day and then had to do this rally and roll over and it was a, a ended up being a down day with that uh, the signal strength trader did not trade on the day for the NASDAQ. It did not trade today on the S&P. Here is what I'm showing for the market position trader on the NASDAQ. I don't have the S&P market position trader open right now. But short, short trades, um, reverse to long. And so an up day on the um, NASDAQ market position trader we were up about a thousand on the nasdaq trading in the portfolio and it was up here on the daily 1605 it did a little better the market position trader did a little bit better than our um, portfolio and so on the week though this is up 4080 a little bit better than what we're doing um, and so i have a new setup for this i want to show you so here it is, um, the market position trader results going back three years. And I have a new setup I want to show you. Here, here's what this market position trader looks like. And I want to show you um, the update. I've used average entry price, a hypothetical average entry price for all strategies as a to um, use it in the code. And I'm going to show you that in TradeStation 9.1. Notice the improvement and this right here it's going to go it's going to go up about a thousand percent because this drawdown is going to drop by about six thousand dollars and this is going to go up just a little bit uh, the average trade is going to go up by about forty dollars this is going to go up so let's take a look at that so here it is in TradeStation 9.1 where i'm uh, updating it researching it 1.53 uh, this goes down to 17.950 this goes up to 713 184 and so this number is 39.74 instead of around the 2900 percentile and that is just the return over drawdown going back for three years and so i'm excited about this it trades about it takes about a thousand less trades as well and so it's more selective you can see there's one short trade today and one long trade you know not getting the exact turning points but calling the moves and in our live trading we were up on the nasdaq down the s p today so um, wanted to share that with you. So these are the trades on the day for Wednesday, August the 9th, 2023. Let's pause for CPI because CPI has such a bad um, record this year and wait for a drawdown after this run up we've been in and then come back after a drawdown and I'll continue to update the hypothetical. Hey, David Bean here. Welcome to Capstone Trading Systems YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe to join our community of algorithmic traders. We are real money traders. We share our winning streaks, we share our losing streaks, as well as market updates, strategies, and coding tips.